Good morning. Welcome, children of God, to this second Sunday after Pentecost. We are going to start with our Psalm 51, which you can find in the Book of Common Prayer on page 137. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, a reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9. It's verse 35 through 10, verse 8. It says, Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places, reported kingdom news, and healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruises, and hurt lives. When he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke so confused and aimless they were like sheep without a shepherd. What a huge harvest, he said to his disciples, and how few workers. On your knees and pray for harvest hands. The prayer was no sooner prayed than it was answered. Jesus called 12 of his followers and sent them into the right fields. He gave them power to kick out the evil spirits and to tenderly care for the bruised and hurt lives. This, this is the list of the twelve that he sent. Simon, they called him Peter or Rock, Andrew his brother, James Zebedee's son, John his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the taxman, James son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot who later turned on him. Jesus sent his 12 harvest hands out with this charge. Don't begin by traveling to some far out place to convert unbelievers and don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick, raise the dead, touch the untouchables, kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, today in today's scripture, Jesus is again talking to his disciples. The reading today gives us insight into why Jesus is motivated or needs to have disciples, which we call ourselves disciples too. He tells us in the scripture that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So there's lots of people out there that need help or need to hear about him, but the laborers or he is only one person. So I have a question for you this morning. Do you eat? And I brought an apple. And of course, why do we eat? For nutrition, to be healthy, to um, give our body energy, to get the vitamins we need through, through good foods. So we're motivated to eat healthy. Do you like to sleep? Well, of course we do. And I brought my little mask today. Somehow, I sometimes I like to put that mask on. So. It's very dark while I'm sleeping, because what does sleep do for us? It refreshes our body, it gives us rest, it lets our muscles and all of our organs rest so that when we wake up, we feel good and we've had enough sleep so that we are motivated to sleep. And sometimes we don't always get as much sleep as we need, but that motivation to get a good night's sleep and to eat a good meal is there for us. And in the scripture, we see Jesus' motivation for having disciples. He has compassion for people. He doesn't want them to be lost sheep. He cares for them. 
and he needs help in caring for them and sharing the gospel. He is going to send them out to do his work. So the disciples are there and he's going to send them out. But they're still learning how to do this, but he's given them some motivation. So I want you to think about if Jesus is sending us out like he is to do the work, what kind of workers are we? Where, where are we, do we fit? And what vocation or type of work could we do for Jesus? Maybe you're someone who likes to pray and you could pray for a lot of people people across the world, people who are hurting, people in your own community, because he says, you're right here in your community, your neighbors need your help. Maybe you like to cook meals. Maybe that could be something you would like to do for other people when they're in the hospital or they're sick. That could be your vocation or your job to show Jesus' love. Maybe you like to write letters. Maybe you're a good writer or a good artist and you like to send someone a note or a card. So the gifts that God has given you, and we all have gifts from God, they may be different than other people's, we can use that to go out into the world and share his gospel, which is what he wants us to do. He wants us to go and have compassion and show love for others. And Jesus helped the disciples long ago to do this, and he certainly helps us. So think about what do you feel is your calling to go out? What do you do that you love doing that you think could help and share and spread the word of Jesus and show love to other people? What are the types of things that you do? Maybe you're very patient. Maybe you would like to go and visit people in the hospital and talk to them and tell them about Jesus. So think about how God is calling you because we're all called in different ways and he loves us and he tells us that he's going to be there to help us. He's not leaving us on our own. Jesus is going to be here to help us do his work. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who taught the disciples and us how to receive your compassion, your healing, and your teaching so that we can share your compassion, healing, and teaching with others. God in my mind, God in my heart, God on my left, God on my right. Amen. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about our hand prayer so we're ready to pray. If you'll hold your hand up with me. I love you, God. I'm sorry, God. I thank you, God. Help others, God. Think of all the ways you could help and use your, your talents to help other people. Help me, God to go out and love Jesus and share his news, and I'm listening, God. Amen. As uh, Miss Cheryl was teaching us, I was thinking about the Lord's Prayer, which says uh, that we, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and I it, thought about how many of you all participated in camp outreach this last week and how that probably helped you figure out what are some of the ways and gifts that you have to be able to make God's kingdom present on this earth as it is in heaven. So let's pray for that, that we would continue to do that by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And if you had printed out your bulletin, I'm not going to use the collect in there. I'm going to use the one on page 137 at the bottom of Daily Devotions. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we might not fall into sin nor be overcome by any adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and our blessing for today. Deep peace to you, my child, deep peace. Peace in your body, peace in your mind, peace in your spirit. As you breathe in deeply, breathe in peace. May the worries of your mind seem far away. May you know God's love for you and your family's love too. Deep, deep peace to you, my child, deep peace. Boys and girls, I sure miss seeing you on a weekly basis and the high fives and things. And so this day, I just ask God bless you in the name of God the Father and of God the Son and of God the Holy Spirit. And that God would be with you now and always. Amen. We have a few announcements. The first thing I really want to say is thank you to all the volunteers and the people who helped get Camp Outreach, our first virtual Camp Outreach last week, and um, we had a great number of children who participated. There were, I think, 30 children that participated, and lots of adults, and our sewing team made some wonderful prayer labyrinths for them, individuals, so we thank them for doing all that hard work. All right, we welcome you if you are our guest today, and please go to our website, stjohnsnb.com, or you can email us at office at stjohnsnb.com and we'd love to hear from you. Or if you have questions about St. John's, we'd love to talk to you about them. As we prepare for a modified and phased reopening, there is important information that you must know about the requirements of returning to church. A letter with frequently asked questions, as well as the bishop's protocols and rules for church attendees will be made out to you. Make sure you read the reopening letter from St. John's this information is also on our website, and one of the criteria and protocols is the number of COVID-19 cases. So we're looking at that and paying attention to how that looks. Noonday prayer volunteers are needed. So if you have internet access at home, a smartphone, or an active Facebook account, and you love Jesus, contact the office, and we'd love to have you as part of that team. The adult education continues today. Sunday, June 14th at 10 a.m., and this class is led by Adrian. Um, there's no book needed. If you need information, you can contact the office to find out how you can get involved in that. The men's Bible study is on Wednesdays at 7.30 a.m. You can contact Roy Lund for information. And the women's Bible study is every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. and contact Carrie Franzel to join that. Thanks again to all those who participated in Camp Outreach. We had a great week. We hope that you have a great week, and we will see you all soon. Bye.